Greg's son is particularly stoked. Greg Rebell's on the show. Hey. The Mandalorian comes out today. It's a big deal in your that. household. Maybe not for you, but for the household, right? Yeah, I'm all X-Wings and TIE Fighters. That, 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 <laughs> that's my okay, era. Okay. So, you know, Get after, after that, it's, it's, you know, kind of... <laughs> Just Ewoks in your <laughs> house. Okay, we are in March. I don't know if you realize that. Um, March As of is, today. The March eyes? is a beautiful month. Yes, thank you. It's a beautiful month, and you, you can kind of feel it in the air because, uh, hey, we're headed to Vegas for some basketball, baby. It's going to be a fun week. And soon, uh, as in next year, we'll be headed to Kansas City. So a change of pace uh, next year. But, uh, yeah, the 12th and final WCC tournament uh, for BYU. Let's go, baby. I, it's, it's funny that it's already here. I mean, at the beginning of the year, you're like, oh, it's going to – the season and all, everything that's, that's ahead of us, and then it's right here before you know it, and you have all the ups and downs of, of everything that goes through. What did you see in Saturday's win that you think or you believe is sustainable this week in Vegas to see what BYU can do? Point guard play. You know, in, in playoff hockey, we always talk about the hot goalie. You can ride a hot goalie to the Stanley Cup. And I think, I think you can ride a hot point guard in postseason basketball. Mm. I think Rudy's that guy right now. Uh, getting him back in the starting lineup, uh, he was already playing well. I think he's double figures his last seven games. His shooting number is really reliable. Uh, gets to the basket a lot. I mean, a, a point guard who can get fouled and make his free throws at his rate is super valuable. Um, the seven assists and one turnover, you keep that trend going. I think he's the hot goalie for BYU right now. It's Rudy Williams. That's should, sustainable. Should he start on Friday? I, I'd roll him out. Why not? I yeah. would, too. He yeah. acted like on Monday, no, I'd prefer to come off the bench again. Yeah, I, you know, at this point, how many games do you have left? Uh, you, you know, Maybe and, one. Like, you have to so show up, I, right? So I, yeah. I go with the hot hand, and, and I think it's more than a, it can be more than a senior night gesture to put Rudy out there and just keep – again, they won with him in, played well. BYU played one of his best games of the season, arguably. Uh, roll him out. That's what I, I mean. Hey, that's just me, but roll him out. Yeah. yeah. Outside of winning the tournament, we're talking about postseason here. Obviously, you win the tournament, you're in the NCAA tournament. For, for BYU to have any postseason, whatever it is, NIT, whatever, what, what's, what does that look like? What gets BYU into postseason play? Well, I, I think getting, getting to Tuesday could put you in that, in that NIT mix. I mean, they're already kind of in the periphery of the NIT, but there are a lot of good teams that are going to make the NIT. And we haven't gotten into conference tournament time yet where obviously bids get, you know, eaten up there. But I, I think if they got themselves to 20 wins with a win over St. Mary's, um, I, I think you're, you're, you're in the picture, right? Yeah. Uh, if you take a look at, at last year's, um, you know, the, the five lowest rated teams to get in the NIT last year. BYU is right in that ballpark, right in that window. Uh, today's Ken Palm is 77, the Nets 89. If you won three games in Vegas, you're probably looking at a top 75 net, arguably, right around there. And I think that puts you kind of in the mix for the NIT. Um, so I, I think getting to Tuesday would probably do or could do it for BYU, if not a guarantee. Uh, I think anything short of, of Tuesday, they, there might be too many teams between BYU and that NIT field. Realizing this is the last year that this will even be a conversation, but you, you touched on something that I, I had kind of forgotten about, and it, it's sort of X wings and Tie Fighters. Not X wings oh. and Tie. They're always, always top of mind with yeah. that. Um, but this will be the last year where BYU has this early conference tournament, and to where whatever you do, good or bad, it, it's not necessarily forgotten, but sort of lost in the shuffle with everybody else starting a week later. Mm -hmm. How much? How much more do you think that will? benefit BYU and it's going to benefit everybody but going from the situation they're in to playing a week later and if you can have one of those runs having it be more top of mind yeah. how much do you think that will help moving forward I, I think you always feel more top of mind when you get into that selection week of play uh, the games seem to matter more to more people at that time and and BYU will be needing to go on runs in, in the Big 12 it would be harder to get on a roll and yeah. go on a run in that league certainly mm -hmm. um, you know and I'll, I'll be curious to see what the Big 12 tournament format will look like with a 14 team uh, 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 with a 14 team makeup yeah. who plays when and, and how many games you have to win to right. you know to find yourself in the real mix of, of postseason play there yeah there's some like the Big Ten will go you know f they play four six four is kind of their thing so yeah. we'll see if you know when BYU is showing up and how long they're there and what it looks like on the women's side it'll be very interesting yeah. as for the WCC though I mean BYU's never been out before the quarters. Of course, they've only had one opportunity to be out when that was last year and they won their second round game. And, and they're rarely out before the semis. And so, you know, historically, BYU has been a Monday team at the very least uh, for them. I think eight of 11 
tournaments they've played on the Monday. And, and so winning two games, putting you on a Monday, I think that's already a, 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 a symbol of success. Getting to Monday night, you've already beaten a higher-seeded team if you get there. And then you already know that you can play with St. Mary's. You, you had two great games against them. For that matter, you know you can play against Gonzaga. I had two games that could have won there even. So that's what I think makes this, this year's tournament particularly fascinating for BYU is even the ones and twos are teams BYU played with this year and, and felt that they had as good a chance to win them as the opponent. BYU got the best possible situation, it feels like, given who's there. Yeah. San Diego and Portland. You played once, you won both. You and not split. only that, historically, Coach Pope's never lost to San Diego or Portland. There you go. And he's 7-1 against LMU. The one loss came in L.A. a couple months ago. So you're 17-1 and against the pre-Monday opponents. Historically. This is beautiful. Yeah. And the last game. And also, too, not to cut you, but, the, but the composition of the teams on the other side, I, I, I think BYU feels, especially in the backcourt, they, they maybe got the teams they quote-unquote wanted as opposed to what's on the other side. Now, that's million all, percent. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Like, you, the last time BYU played LMU at home, at home BYU against LMU was incredible, like they were yeah. against San Francisco. Yeah. And so BYU can get to Monday. And if they get to Monday, I think it's like, okay, this team at least got to where we were hoping. And then just see what happens against St. Mary's. And if I have St. Mary's, I do not want to see BYU rolling in on a – into Monday on a two-game win streak on that court I haven't played on yet. Yeah, BYU's on a heater and St. Mary's is playing for the first time. BYU's been in that position, too, and those first games are always kind of wonky. Yes. Uh, and the, the teams on BYU's side of the bracket, just looking at the top side of the bracket, when they won, they won big. And when they lost, they barely lost. So, they I, I, again, I think they feel like they're on the right side. Mm -hmm. Now they have to just go out and, and I love and it. it. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. And, and obviously being on Friday, ideally you don't play on Friday. There may, may be some benefit for this team to do that because they might need a little run-up. Yes, they just won convincing Saturday. Um, they they sort of needed these stakes to rise up. We've seen BYU rise up a couple times. Mm -hmm. Now it's a Well, and where you're now not doing it. anything on Sunday, you get an extra game, and maybe that sort of takes the place of what you would have done yep. had, had you been a, a team that participated on doing things on Sunday. Yep. So it certainly helps. So in the, we were talking earlier um, about uh, – now, the fact that BYU, since joining the WCC, had always had at least one player in the, the first team for all WCC. Yeah. Do you think they get one this week, this today? Do you yeah, think that happens? Fus will be on the line, right? Yeah. Like, he's one of the top 15. Does he make that 10 and 5 cut? Because then WCC, they go 10 player, mm -hmm. first team, 5 player, second team. So he'll be in the top 15, but does it is he, does he sneak in back end of, of the first team or is he dropped to team two? That'll be the question for me. I, I could easily put him in the first team and feel good about it. Um, and he's, he's, a, he's a 13 and 8 guy, shooting better than 60% in conference. Those are really good numbers. Um, you know, the, the, the best player on, uh, on a top five team. Uh, he, he, can, he, could, he could be there, and you could argue it, certainly. Uh, but it'll be right on that, on that line, I think. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, mean, it'd be, I, I don't know if, if, if Gonzaga and St. Mary's get six of the ten, but they could. But they could get six of the ten, which takes a lot of space up, but just those two teams. And then uh, Rudy Williams is an interesting candidate for sixth man of I, the I year. Think, yeah, why he not? could be the guy. We think he could yeah, be Yeah, he's, he's, he's a 12.3 assist guy, shooting nearly 50%. Um, in, in conference, um, off the bench. He started one of 16 games. So I, I, I could go with Rudy with no problem. And then Dallin Hall should be on the freshman team, no yeah. question. You'd think, yeah. yeah. Started most of the games. So coach of the year, player of the year, newcomer? What do you got? Uh, well, newcomer Pajemski, uh, I, I think. Okay. Over, yeah. over That's Mahaney. Tr That's true. Yeah. I, look, I, I, no, I no, was no. between the two, but no, I, I went Mahaney. I had forgotten this was his first year. Yeah, in the it league. Is. Yeah. He is yeah. the newcomer yeah, there. I, not I mean, just, yeah. just explosive. Yep. I mean, as great yep. as Mahaney was, and no doubt Mahaney's a first team guy to me. Um, Pajemski just, just you know, he had no multiple question. 30 point games. So I like Pajemski's newcomer. Yeah. Coach will be probably between Randy and, and Herb. You could always give it to Mark Few. Yep. He's a co champion again. By the way, Let's just for a moment, I used to always say um, that, that BYU, BYU is playing with the, uh, the Kansas of the West Coast Conference when they got Gonzaga in the league. Now they go to play with Kansas of, of, of the, the Kansas. Kansas. Okay, the yeah. Gonzaga of the Big 12. But, but Gonzaga is, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's amazing. Just, I, I had to note these down. 11 consecutive WCC regular season titles, longest current streak nationally. 16 consecutive 25 win seasons. They've won 22 of the last 23 WCC titles. They've been in the WCC tournament title game in 25 straight years. Uh, they've been in the NCAAs 23 years in a row. Seven straight Sweet 16s. Uh, they, they've won the WCC tournament 20 times. Like, BYU was in a 12-season grind with just a behemoth in this league. And now they get to go experience it in the league that Kansas dominated and has dominated for so long. They've just won the league for the 17th time in 19 years 
in the Big 12. That's incredible. So the Cougs have gotten good training for what it's like to, to face a, a true juggernaut in the nation because they've had arguably the two most dominant teams in college basketball in their leagues, Kansas and Gonzaga. They've had one, now they're going to get the other. Should Gonzaga, given that success, I think they like being a big fish in a small pond, chase the TV money? Because what's left for them is like, get, they've changed the rules to accommodate their non-conference and whatnot. Uh, I, I wonder why they'd ever leave. Yeah, but I'm sure it would appeal to Mark Few, though, too. Because after, I mean, he knows what they can do in the WCC. And granted, he knows that he can get a high seat and, and go deep in the NCAA tournament from that league. But... Oh, gosh, it would be really... Is it the next challenge for them? I think it would be really appealing. For Although him. I guess they're trying yeah. to win the Natty. That's the next challenge. But, like, yeah. in-league, everybody... Nobody switches league for competition. They switch it for TV money primarily. I wonder if they feel that need. I, 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 and I, how long I would, is Mark I wouldn't be, be surprised if they felt a little restless at this point. Yeah. So, yeah. They, they flirt with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they're flirt-worthy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. Not to put you on the spot, but with this being the last conference tournament, is, do you have a WCC moment that stands out to you from the last decade plus? Oh, you know, I, I guess I'll, I'll, I, Tyler Hawes' is game winner from the free, low, uh, free throw line against Santa Clara, because BYU's been in, in very few true, you know, make it or break it type situations in that, in, in, in that conference tournament. But Tyler's game uh, certainly stands out. They were kind of in a heartbreaking uh, side of that. I think lost 51-50 to St. Mary's in yeah. the Ole Trials, yeah. Jake Toulson, TJ Hawes Ford year. Ford redemption shot. Yeah, the COVID year. Yeah. Um, but uh, the Tyler's shot probably stands out to me. But, you know, never having won the thing, um, you're kind of looking at those kind of moments. But, uh, you know, and it's just so funny that as tough as it's been for BYU to win a conference tournament title for a while, and this year's been kind of, you know, up and down and a lot of resiliency of adversity. Wouldn't it be funny if, if of all years, in the last year in the <laughs> WCC, the something special happens? It'd be awesome. And what if Gonzaga doesn't play in the title game for the first time in forever? How like does that Santa look? Clara because be Santa Clara yeah. will, you know, clearly, you know, if Santa Clara gets past their game, they'll, they'll have a shot, right? It'll, it'll be a fun game, at least I would think. But then again, Gonzaga's Gonzaga. And it's funny, we talk about the Zags. Oh, it's a bit of a down, a bit of a down. <laughs> 25 wins, yeah. conference school champions. Top 15. Number yeah. one scoring net. team in the country. Number one shooting team in the country. And most efficient team in the It's still Gonzaga. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Gonzaga stinks this year. They're only what Greg just said, <laughs> yeah, which is yeah, incredible. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for the time, Greg. We appreciate it. We'll see what the awards are this afternoon. And then uh, have fun Friday. We'll see you down there. Yeah, I'll see you down there. And spring football is just around the corner. That'll be, that'll be fun to talk Got about. Got the see, combine. See emerges there. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a great time. It, it is a great time. On. All right, yeah, guys. Thanks, Greg. You bet. Thanks, Greg. All right. Join us.